again everyone, this is Martin Fernandez with CubeBrush.com and in this chapter we're going to be talking about hair, so painting the hair, finalizing the hair, and then also painting the hands. Uh, so she's going to be holding uh, her hair probably, something like that, holding something, so uh, we'll need uh, you know a hand somewhere in the canvas. So we're going to start off with the hair. Uh, we've been, you know, tackling the head a lot, uh, the face a lot, and it's pretty, pretty good now. It's in a good spot. So now it's time to actually uh, work on the surroundings. So everything else is still super, super sketchy, and I think it's about time that we get to that. So I'm going to start with the hair because it's the, I guess, the closest thing to uh, to the face, you know, uh, proximity-wise. And uh, the way I approach hair is actually fairly simple. So I always think of it as a like bigger, bigger clumps of hair, and then uh, detail the uh, you know the inside of them uh, afterwards. So as you can see here, I'm, I'm painting a bunch of long streaks, like you can see here on the right. Um, basically, I'm thinking of them as long tubes, and then when you have a bunch of them clumped together, it looks like uh, you know something like that. Obviously, this is like super, super simple way to look at it, but basically, that's uh, that's the idea, and then. Uh, you know, from there's there's different colors. So the right, the ones that I have now are all the same colors. But uh, you can see on the on the actual painting, uh, you know, it gets darker and darker as as you go down, and it's a little bit darker also at the root. Um, so it's important to give to give uh, different different tints in the hair. Uh, having the same color throughout is very very. Uh, it gets really like boring and kind of like doesn't work so um, yeah having a like gradation a good trick is you know especially when you have long hair is to make uh, make uh, the root a little bit darker and then the tip brighter or the other way around so either way both uh, both solutions uh, kind of work and now if we look on the right again uh, you know I can use I can use the same pattern so those those four streaks and then sort of shrink them down like compress them and then use them to detail the inside of each of the streaks so then you get it's kind of like an order of things. It's not just a bunch of you know tiny tiny spaghettis. Uh, you actually you can actually read like the greater forms in there, and then you, you look closely and you actually see the smaller details in there. So you know you have yeah like those four bigger streaks, and then within them uh, another four uh, smaller streaks. So you get like a, a second read to it, which is the idea. If you don't have the initial shapes, like the bigger shapes, uh, it won't read well at all, and it'll be kind of like messy and hard to look at, and it'll actually create a pattern which will attract attention too much, which is something that we don't want. Uh, so repetition of uh, of pattern, something in uh, composition that we want to try to avoid, unless unless it's exactly what we're chasing, which is not the case here. And then. Uh, you know, uh, like I said, if you if you add a little bit of gradient on top of that, so a little bit of highlights and then darken the tips, and you can actually get something pretty nice, so something like that, you know. And this took me literally like seconds to make, and you get uh, you get n nice streaks of hair. It reads well. Uh, you get the different layers, and then you can you can control e each of those like bigger bigger clumps, and uh, you know have them uh, sort of you know behave differently, and so. To give to give a little bit more like let's say you know you have some wind or uh, or uh, you know they're they're laying on something or it's always easier again to uh, to imagine what a bigger shape will do like a simpler shape will do uh, if you were to ignore that first step and do all the, the tiny tiny hair like uh, you know from the start it gets really complicated to try to organize all of them and let's say you know how do they sort of cross how do they like tangle properly how do they uh, react when they're you know pressed against something and when there's there's tension uh, it gets really really hard actually like crazy hard to, to be able to to manage to manage that when it's a lot of tiny ones so you know as uh, as we did with the facial features and the head itself uh, simplified to its, to its uh, bigger shapes biggest shape uh, to, to its uh, simplest form and then you know go from there So as you can see here, I'm starting to actually dress her up. So she was she wasn't wearing anything uh, up until this point. It was just like a bunch of a bunch of scribbles. Uh, now I'm actually starting to think that she's gonna be wearing some sort of like a, like I don't know like a simple 
tank top or something like that. So I don't want to put too much time on there. Uh, I'm going to have the hand cover most of that anyway, so that's my goal. And, uh, yeah. Uh, and then for the rest, the rest of it, I think I'm just going to cover it with hair. Uh, I really don't want to spend too much time here. I want to go back to, to the face a little bit after, uh, you know, after this chapter. And then also uh, polish up the hair uh, in in the final phases. So that's I know for you know I know this is gonna take me a while. Uh, in this chapter, I'm gonna I'm just gonna do the basics, so every, just so that it looks it looks right. And then after that, the, the polishing bit takes quite a bit of time. So I don't wanna I don't wanna spend like you know another 20 hours on this painting. So I'm not gonna worry too much about what's on the edges of the canvas. Uh, so yeah, which is why I'm not paying too much attention to the de the design of her, you know, clothes. So similar, uh, similar to skin, hair is actually uh, actually behaves in a in a similar way under under a light source. So. It rarely gets really, really dark uh, with hair, unless there's a lot of hair sort of packed together. In which case, you'll have you know darker, darker shadows like closer to black. But uh, it's it's actually quite rare. Most of the time, the the light just diffuses uh, through the hair, and it gives it a um, like a similar, a similar look as uh, to skin. So you'll have this uh, almost as if it's glowing, you know, like a. You've probably seen these these pictures, you know, where uh, somebody, uh, most of the time, like a female with long hair, is is uh, lit from the back, and you, you get like this this crazy halo, uh, you know, around the hair. Uh, that there's a lot of that going on, since there's a lot of space in between each you know, hair, uh, the light can actually go go through it pretty pretty easily. So it's never really an opaque opaque uh, look to it. So now I'm gonna be doing the hand. Uh, I'm not, you know, the shape is probably gonna change. So that's why, like, whenever I have something different that I'm not sure, uh, that I'm not entirely sure of, uh, while being sure of what's underneath. So <laughs> uh, I'm gonna pop a new layer to make sure. So in case you know I want to get rid of it, I don't have to, to redraw uh, the background, which was for me like good enough. So the hand for now it's on its own layer. And uh, I'm probably gonna shrink it a little bit because it's a little bit too big now. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna again light it up, you know, the same way as I did for uh, the facial features. So think of the fingers as you know super simple cylinders, and then try to imagine what they look like in you know different different angles, different perspective, and try to light light up the hand like this. Again, the the, the hand itself is going to be on the edge of the canvas. So I don't want to spend too too long on this. I know it's gonna, not gonna look like perfect, but that's fine because uh, towards the end I'm probably gonna blur it anyways. Um, yeah, so there you go, shrinking it down a little bit. So she'll be. Uh, my idea at this point was that she was she was gonna be holding like a strand of her uh, hair, uh, just so that I have something going on at the uh, at the bottom of the canvas. Because so far everything is at the top, and then you have the long hair sort of leaning the you know, leaning the eye down a little bit because of all the verticality of, uh, of the piece. And there was nothing there to, you know, to, to grab the attention. So it was uh, kind of a fail of a composition. So, you know, by having a hand there uh, actually gives, gives something for the eye to look at. And then after that, you know, uh, I'll have the hair sort of pointing back up to the face. And you'll see, like the hair is gonna, the hair strand is gonna curve back to the face, so that the composition kind of loops back into the, onto the face. So now I'm drawing the head, the, the hand, uh, not the hand, the, the arm and the shoulders. Uh, I wasn't too sure at this point what I was gonna do with the, the entire composition. I was thinking of maybe expanding the canvas so that I see a little bit more, so that it's not, you know, portrait anymore. To do it more like a landscape. But uh, I ended up scratching that idea, so I'll bring I'll bring the canvas back to to what it was before. But I was uh, I was just experimenting at this point, trying to see if if you know that would work better. And you can also notice the background now changed. Uh, it used to be kind of red, now it's blue. Uh, that was just a really really quick fix, and it it just felt better blue uh, because the uh, you know the diffuse light. Uh, in the scene, so the ambient light in the scene was was tinted uh, 
purple, if you can remember. So it made a little bit more sense for the actual environment surrounding her to, to have that tint as well. So for the hands and for the hair, uh, as you can probably see, I'm still using the soft uh, round brush, uh, the Photoshop default, because it's really, really good for this kind of stuff. You know, it's going to be uh, on the edge of the canvas, like I keep saying, and it's not too important. So I don't want it to be to be super sharp, to be super detailed. I don't want to see too many brush strokes because you know, when I have, whenever you have the frequency of uh, many brush strokes and it, it attracts attention and I don't want to attract attention to anything that is you know bordering the the edge of the canvas I want to you know keep the eye away from that because there's that's that would be bad composition I want to keep the eyes on the eyes of the character or the face so uh, by having by using a soft brush then you make sure that uh, you know and by not sort of uh, shrinking the size of the brush too much by keeping it quite you know quite large uh, at minimum uh, it makes you know it forces me to uh, to not spend too much time on those things keep it in a stage that is uh, kind of like blurry like out of focus So as you'll see, uh, painting hair for me at least is a lot of trial and error. So there's a lot of, uh, since there's a lot of different elements that are sort of interacting uh, with each other, it, it makes it makes it a little bit tricky to plan ahead. So you know, plan one streak that goes this way, and then the other one that crosses it that way, and to maintain a sort of this this nice flow, and not have it all kind of ruin the composition. Uh, it gets it gets a little bit tricky to to plan ahead. So in my case, what I do, I just I just try it out. So I, I give the general direction to the hair, uh, kind of do a silhouette like you you know you've seen me do before, and then uh, I'll go in and paint in the bigger streaks, uh, keeping it really really big initially, and try to make those bigger streaks kind of work with one another. And uh, even at that level, it gets pretty pretty challenging. So. Once that's figured out, like once everything flows nicely, and uh, you know, once once there's no there's no like clear pattern going on, uh, because you know, let's say you have a bunch of streaks that are like parallel to each other, that will create like a, a composition pattern, and that's not good because it attracts attention. Uh, so you want to you want to make sure that everything flows night flows nicely, uh, doesn't doesn't sort of attract too much attention, uh, aka there's no no pattern, nothing not too many tangents or if you know if possible not at all and um, once that it's done once that's when, once that's uh, figured out then after that like paint painting in the uh, the details within those streaks actually pretty easy uh, so that that last step is actually you know, quite quite relaxing as opposed to you know the initial the initial phase so um, that's what I'll be. Uh, that, that's what I'll be doing for this chapter, and uh, it's going to be, like I said, a lot of trial and error. So I'll I'll let the video play until the end of this chapter, and then I'll pick it back up at that point. See you in a bit.
pretty much done with this. So I'm pretty satisfied with the details so far. Uh, the hair came out pretty good. Uh, there's still some some couple tweaks here and there to do, but uh, I'm already ready, as you can see, to uh, uh, you know add in the, the final details and the final like tiny tiny hair um, because the main the main strands of hair have pretty much been you know figured out. Uh, so uh, this is really the, the I guess the the fun part, the relaxing part, where I just get to to add detail and not worry about about too much uh, anymore, because everything is pretty much set in stone. So uh, you can also notice that I've uh, added something in our hair, uh, hair, so some sort of a, like a sci-fi clip or whatever that is. Um, so that was that was there from the start. I uh, just got to finally uh, finishing it. So I'm not going to spend too much time on here. It's not really important. Uh, it just it just breaks the the big mass of white hair that she has uh, which was uh, you know if, if I let it uh, the way it was it probably wouldn't have been as successful as a, as a composition so I needed you know something to, to break the shape a little bit um, but yeah so I am going to be uh, picking it up in the next chapter and uh, we're going to be tackling all the smaller details uh, so like it's all the skin details and doing the final touch-ups on the actual painting. I'll see you then.